Good morning or afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our five tips to have your best town hall webinar. My name is Mariah Pushnik, and I will be your moderator this morning. And we have a couple guests today, the first being Philip Hilberath, Blue Jeans Senior Unified Communications Engineer. And Philip today is going to be revealing his top five tips for a successful all hands or town hall meeting, including pre, live, and post event best practices in a short recorded video. Um, Justin McAfee will then take the floor, uh, Blue Jeans product marketing manager, and he's going to introduce the event's product itself, demonstrating top features and capabilities loved by our customers. Um, before we get started, just a few quick housekeeping items I want to address. Um, so for today's webinar, we are using the events product itself. So all attendees um, who have joined, um, this is a one-way viewing experience and you're muted upon entry. Also, if you have any technical issues throughout the presentation, please feel free to post them in the moderator chat feature, um, which is just right in that uh, right-hand navigation center. Um, also, in this right-hand navigation center, you'll see the Q&A chat feature, and this is where um, you're going to post any questions you have regarding today's topic, and um, we will get to these at the end of the presentation. Um, lastly, uh, this will be recorded and sent out to all attendees after the event, um, and it will be sent to the email that you provided um, upon registering. Um, so that, that being said, again, my name is Mariah. I uh, really appreciate everyone's time today, and um, let's get it started. Hey everybody, I'm Justin McKeffey. I work on the Blue Jeans product marketing team. And today I am super excited to get to talk to Philip Hilberath. He is the senior unified communications engineer here at Blue Jeans. So Philip, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. And please walk people through what you do in a given day here at Blue Jeans. Great, thank you for having me today, Justin. So what I do here at Blue Jeans is handle all the video aspects of uh, Blue Jeans internal uh, video needs. So I handle the events, I handle the conference rooms globally, the deployment basically of our products. So I'm here to ensure that our users utilize our product set. Well, who better to talk to than about five pro tips from a town hall expert. I'm interested to see some of the guidance that you have had and learned from in the past and, and share with any folks that are watching today. So we'll do a before, during, and after segment sure. and talk through some of those, those tips that people can use. So we'll start off with question number one. So Philip, how do you go about setting up a town hall, both the physical space and also the software needs to ensure a compelling event? Sure. So uh, what we'll usually do is sit down with uh, the folks that are coordinating the event to see what their um, the needs are for the event itself. The content, you know, are they going to uh, stream the workplace? Um, what What is the target audience as far as how big is it going to be? What locations? So once you have that nailed down, then you'll just specify um, basically can we have an agenda? Where are all the locations coming from? Where are the presenters going to be? That way it's just easier for you to follow along. Granted, we all know that Things can change at the very last minute, but it's always important to have that. And then you can take a look at the locations as far as the lighting aspects or aesthetics. You don't really need to change much. Just ensures that you, you know which locations are coming onto the call. And if you need to do something, you have that accessibility. How do you go about preparing the CEO and any other speakers that are joining this town hall? Dry runs. That's all I can say. A lot of dry runs, and, and as far as uh, that's concerned, basically I like to start off the day before um, or two days before. It doesn't take a lot of prep time. It's all based on your avail uh, the availability of your presenters, basically. So I like to sit down for about 30 minutes and just walk through the entire event as far as the slides. Are we going to play back any videos? You know, I show them uh, where they're going to be standing. Uh, I like to mark the ground. Uh, a lot of uh, presenters like to walk. Some like to stand still. So I basically give them a, a boxed location on the floor that, you know, I can pick up with my camera. And they can walk or they can stand still. But then we also play back any videos. I answer any questions. But always, always do dry runs. And that also includes your registrations. 
you know, when you're setting all of that up and sending that out to the um, attendees, the presenters, and or the moderators, do a test the day before on this, you know, the account that you have and send the, the registration to yourself to make sure everything's okay. We'll move into the, the during event portion now, and I just want to ask you, you know, what specific moderator controls are the most important for a great event while it's going on? Muting and unmuting the locations will be my responsibility. That's video, audio, um, promoting people who are uh, going to ask questions uh, during the event when they're attending. That's the great thing about this event is that you can actually promote them into the live portion of the call to ask questions and then put them back into attending view only uh, as part of the stream. But um, I do recommend that you have a second person with you uh, that will handle all of the chat and the posting of the, the uh, uh, polls and Q&A and things like that. We utilize all of our chat to just get a feel of what's coming in from the field, basically. If they have questions or, you know, if they run into some problems, that's what the second uh, person will do, the second moderator, basically, where I'm handing all the technical aspects of muting and unmuting, and uh, that person will handle uh, the aspects of chance, uh, chats, answering questions, or posting polls. So. Um, the other aspect that we like to do is also changing the layout depending upon the content that's being presented. So if you're uh, presenting a video, we like to go ahead and uh, mute all the other uh, foreign locations, the presenters, so that way we get the full aspect of the video being played back instead of all these squares that are along the bottom, basically like a layout. So that's one of the other controls uh, that we use. When you think about the modern workforce, if they're going to line up and sit down to watch this thing, this big town hall event, for an hour or two, you know, they obviously have the expectation for great, compelling information and content. So how do you ensure a variety of content throughout the flow so that the audience is engaged and entertained? Well, we'll always interact with our audience right off the bat, uh, again, through uh, the chats. And that's what's really good about events, okay? Uh, you have a one-stop shop within your whole entire UI for all of your moderator controls, all of your videos, you know, you can um, share from there also. But I bring up one point about that. I always like to have a secondary laptop. You're mentioning about compelling content and stuff. Well, the pre-aspect of that is also having a second laptop to actually share that content. That way, I can still be in my moderator controls and, and working all of that without having to share all those screens. Because when you do share, you know, people are going to see the screens that you're going through, where the secondary laptop can just basically have the PowerPoint presentation, as an example, uh, being shown to that. And, you know, we just forward the slides to there. So that, that way you maintain that aspect. And then any of videos and things like that, we could play through the, the moderator channels. But to get back to your com, com, um, compelling content question, what we'll do is the secondary person that is with me uh, will always be polling the audience. You know, is the content you know, pertinent to what we're being presented? Is it too long? Is it too short? Some of those are the polls that we'll use towards the end uh, to get a feel of not only the format that we're running in, you know, as far as timeline, but also do you feel like the executives are delivering, uh, or your present, uh, presenters, I don't always want to say executive, because a, present, uh, a presenter could be anybody, um, to see if, you know, are they delivering their message correctly, how do you feel? So you'll just get that, that pulse back from your remote audiences on what's going on. That brings us to the post-event portion. So after the event has completed, what types of data do you reference to maintain and improve the quality of future events? Well, the feedback from the actual end user community. So we'll uh, take a look at all of the um, poll percentages, uh, the Q&A, uh, chat logs, things like that. And that's great about events that it gives you all of that after the event is actually over. Um, people m might not have had their questions answered. Uh, uh, say, for instance, the executive needs to get back to an individual that uh, wasn't participating that day. So, you know, we'll make sure that those questions are sent back. Anything from a support aspect, if a person was experiencing issues uh, with the event, we'll go ahead and send that over to our support team. So we utilize the full suite of tools that are available to us through uh, events.
All right, Philip, thank you so much for your time and uh, walking through that. So, and thank you to everybody else as well that's watching today. So we pre-recorded that video yesterday with Philip to get his take on the top five tips from a town hall expert. And the beauty of that is he couldn't necessarily make all of these events that we're having today. We're actually doing three webinars today. So that didn't matter. We were able to pre-can the interview and play it back live for you. That is one of several Blue Jeans events features, and I'll go into a few other ones right now. You know, so Philip talked about these different strategies you can use before, during, and after the event. Dry runs obviously came up, creating engaging and interactive content during the event, and then following up upon that actionable data that you get from the post-event reports. So I'm gonna drill into some of those concepts a little more deeply and expound a little bit upon some of those to give you a better sense about what it is the Blue Jeans events platform can do. And we'll also go through a couple of customer stories that we're happy to share with you as well. So first of all, let's jump into some of these, these big pillars that we like to talk about when it comes to Blue Jeans events. We tend to focus on executive town halls, all hands meetings, corporate presentations, and trainings. So generally those internal use cases for the events platform. And we've got these five different pillars that we like to talk about when it comes to the functionality of this technology. So we'll start off with video interactivity. This fits within the attendee experience bucket. You know, video interactivity is critical these days. If you think about the barrage of notifications and pings and requests and you know, different forms of communication through everyday work applications, we are constantly getting hit and distracted by numerous message, messages throughout the day. So when it comes to an executive town hall and reaching the entire employee base, it's become harder than ever to hit everybody between the eyes with an important message. And so video interactivity allows you to really capture and retain their attention throughout the presentation. I'll go into that in a little bit more detail in just a second. Also joined from conference rooms, desktops, and mobile devices. Case in point, I am in a conference room right now that is outfitted with a Dolby conference room unit right here, and so I've joined as a presenter here while I'm sharing my screen in the moderator mode. Um, download free for the attendee experience. They don't need to download any desktop application. They just get a join link, an invitation link, they hit the link and they can watch the event on any browser that they'd like. And then on the administrative side, moderator controls and bandwidth management, critical for the IT folks and the AV folks that are typically orchestrating and coordinating these big events. And I'll go into just a little bit more about those things in just a moment. So let's talk for a second here about video interactivity. So this is multi-presenter and bi-directional streaming. So there's a lot that goes into this, and it's quite interesting, actually, when you, when you think about one of these large-scale events, especially for companies that are globally dispersed all over the place, multiple campuses, multiple office locations. You know, it's critical that you reach all of your employees, every single department, every organization that's on that call, and give them also an opportunity to speak up if someone in the audience has a question. So I'll explain how Blue Jeans events is different than traditional webcasting platforms when it comes to these big town hall events. Typically on some of those other solutions, it's oftentimes set up with maybe three or four speakers speaking unidirectionally, one way, to the entire crowd. So it's essentially the C-level and then the employee base listening to the message. What's different about Blue Jeans events is that if someone in the audience has a question, and they want to address the CEO or the CRO or the CMO on camera, they can raise their hand. And then the moderator grants them permission, puts them into the presenter seat, and they literally can appear on camera to ask the CEO a question. And so the reason that that is important is it literally gives a voice to everybody across the employee base, and it creates a more compelling event where everybody feels like they're a part of this big collaborative experience. In addition to that, 100 live speakers, up to 100 live speakers can be active on the call at once, and uh, that also enables large roundtable discussions, you know, extra large roundtable discussions should you have that many folks on the call, um, and also up to 15,000 endpoints. So different conference rooms, people can watch on their desktop computers, the mobile experience as well, um, so we sort of accommodate all of those different forms of two-way communication, both hosting and receiving content through these presentations. And when you talk about 15,000 endpoints and a whole variety of endpoints within the same local area network, that obviously creates challenges when it comes to connectivity and internet speeds. 
And so to uh, mitigate some of those challenges, BlueJeans has developed these three different solutions for bandwidth management. This is unconditional reliability and world-class streaming for any network. So that means the attendee experience can be crystal clear if you use one of these three solutions. I'll break each one down with uh, starting with Accelerator. So Accelerator is a caching engine. And what it does is it consolidates multiple video requests into a single stream from the BlueJeans cloud. And the benefit of that is that instead of, let's say, two or 300 people in one local area network, each individually requesting that video stream, it obviously is taxing on the network. It can create choke points, frequent buffering, slower internet speeds, and generally a poor video quality and poor video experience. So Accelerator is a virtualized software that you deploy within your virtual machine that creates crystal clear streaming with no network stress. But let's say Accelerator isn't right for you. Um, well, we've got this peer-to-peer -peer streaming option. We're excited that we announced this this fall as well. This is generally available now. So peer-to-peer -peer streaming works this way. It leverages those area of higher internet strength and connectivity on one side of your local area network as opposed to another. So that's kind of a simplified way of putting it, but just think about it this way. Let's say one half of the building has five out of five bars, and you just know it's always reliable, it's always rock solid over here with the internet strength, but over on the other side of the building, you don't necessarily have strong internet connection. What peer-to-peer -peer streaming does is it leverages those areas with really high crystal clear internet strength, and it shares it with other folks that maybe don't have, say, five out of five bars. And that impacts the viewing experience because it, it gives everybody watching crystal clear content, audio, and video quality. Now, built into the platform, the third here is low bandwidth mode and adaptive bitrate streaming. This is a fail-safe that is built within the BlueJeans advanced solution. So let's say you're joining an event and you don't have particularly high internet strength. Well, that's all right. So what, what it low bandwidth mode does is it actually cancels out the video feature. It doesn't attempt to try and put together that video component along with the audio and the content. And instead, it just focuses on that audio stream and the PowerPoint stream or the content stream, like what you're watching right now. And the beauty of that is, if let's say the CEO is about to make some big announcement, like everybody gets a raise over the holidays or something like that, and your video cuts out right before he says that, you miss out on the really important component of it. So what it is, what this low bandwidth mode does is it allows for the audio stream to continue even if you're in a poor bandwidth environment. So you don't miss out on any of that really critical information. So it's built into the product as a fail safe. Moderator control, also very important if you're hosting these large scale events. If you're an IT person or even a communications person, HR person that has to organize these large town hall events, you know, you've got lots of different people, hundreds if not thousands of people joining at once from different endpoints, different conference rooms, different mobile devices and things like that. You need to have a way to manage the end-to-end -end experience. You have to easily be able to mute people, unmute people, push content, upload videos and share them with the crowd, and of course communicate with the crowd through chat and QA and polling. And so this back-end moderator control system literally gives you a 360-degree view of the event experience so you can see exactly what's going on. Everything, even outside in the periphery, becomes into, you know, it comes into your uh, line of sight and you can see exactly what's going on in the event to make sure that everyone can hear and consume the, the content uh, properly. Modernized participation. So this ties into that idea I said earlier that every day we kind of get hit with a lot of pings and notifications and messages and stuff. You know, this modernized participation idea, it ties directly to those everyday business and consumer applications that we use. We like to share content. We like to see modern media. We like to chat and comment on things and like things. So why not bring that exact same concept into a large, a large scale streaming solution? And that's what we've done here. So if you think about, you know, the object of a large town hall event, you know, it's to get everybody across the employee base to be engaged in the content and listening to what's being said by the C-level. And just to make a quick comparison, you know, if you're at home, you're watching Netflix or TV or Hulu or something like that, you know, you're typically kind of in a passive position. You're leaning back a little bit. Your body language is quite relaxed, as it should be. You're not at work. But the goal of a town hall, is to get your employees to lean forward 
and engage in the content and interact with the content and hang on your every word if you're if you're telling everybody something very important. So these modernized participation tools try to accommodate that by allowing everybody to be a part of the conversation. Host or join from anywhere, conference room systems, desktops, mobile devices, and any browser. I'll quickly go through these. So any endpoint. Um, let's say you've deployed Polycom or LifeSize or Cisco hardware or Logitech hardware across your conference rooms. Continue to use them. It's fantastic gear, and you can host or join these BlueJeans events from any endpoint. So interoperability has been a part of the BlueJeans story for a very long time, and we've applied the exact same thing to the event solution. I'm inside of a conference room right now. So was Mariah that you saw at the beginning there. And so uh, the beauty of that is if you've got teams that are all joining inside of these large conference rooms, they get to consume the content together. They get to enjoy a community and a collaborative experience. They can react together, ask questions together, and all appear on camera uh, as a team. It, it certainly builds solidarity and, and uh, a team experience when everyone's watching. For any setting, Dolby Voice is integrated with BlueJeans events. That means intelligent audio with noise suppression so that nobody misses a word or can't quite understand a word that's spoken by the speakers. It suppresses any background noise and it ensures that everybody on the receiving end can hear exactly what they need to. Any operating system, Linux, Windows, Apple, Android devices, you name it, you can join uh, from any of those different operating systems. And then any browser, of course, tying into those download free a component where if you're an attendee, you just hit the invitation link, you join via any browser you'd like, and you get to watch and uh, engage with that content. So now we'll quickly go into a little bit of uh, product validation from, from some of our customers that have found very interesting use cases for the BlueJeans event solution. And a lot of these folks use it, uh, you know, more than, more than monthly, more than quarterly for sure. Some of them host these departmental meetings, product trainings, and internal announcements uh, pretty regularly, some of them even daily. Um, and we'll go through some of these really quickly. So Zillow, a BlueJeans customer, uh, Zillow's objectives were to strengthen team culture and the community of employees, regardless of their office location or remote location. But at the same time, they had bandwidth challenges. They needed to optimize bandwidth consumption within these local area networks so that the viewing experience was crystal clear and top notch for everybody on the call. So the solution was, BlueJeans events. Executive leadership now hosts company-wide all-hands meetings with BlueJeans events streamed to a variety of endpoints. And to date, happy to say that Zillow has hosted 83 large-scale internal events to bring every employee and department together. And then answering their demand for bandwidth optimization, BlueJeans Accelerator is used within their local area network so that those folks on the receiving end always get a high-quality experience. Next, we'll take a quick look at Grubhub. Quite similar, the cultural story tends to be a theme with a lot of these large town hall events. Large companies like to get every employee aligned on the same page in a collaborative environment. And so these types of large scale video events definitely you know, support that mission for bringing everybody together. So uniting an international employee base with an emphasis on engagement and unique culture. So the solution was company-wide fireside chats with large scale video streaming. And these are some of the business outcomes that they've realized at Grubhub. They've got enhanced team collaboration, customer meetings, and corporate culture, like a virtual wing eating contest. Not too surprising, the company is Grubhub after all. And they've been able to broadcast those types of large scale events thanks to the BlueJeans event solution. And also they do internal education sessions hosted on BlueJeans events. Either those participants can watch the live event or they can watch the on-demand version if uh, the event was recorded. They can watch it any time that they want to and uh, check out the event after the fact. And at the end of the day, it saved time for IT because it puts more power into the hands of the A, the end users, and B, the moderators once they learn how to use the software. And then we'll end on Illumina here. So not too long ago, Illumina announced a new CEO and the CEO said specifically, hey, I would love to communicate with the entire employee base, but I also want every one of those endpoints and sites to be able to participate, communicate, and interact. Lumen is a large company. It's a company of about 8,000 people with offices all over the world, multiple campuses, multiple office locations, and a very large employee base. So critical to get everybody on the same page, no doubt. And so the solution was BlueJeans events for these monthly town halls that allows those endpoints to speak up, ask questions, participate, 
yes chat, yes poll, yes uh, Q&A and things like that, but also, importantly, appear on camera, ask questions, and uh, create this, this large-scale collaborative environment. And so happy to say that Illumina has gotten a lot of the product and uh, use it quite frequently. And so I will stop quickly with this and just want to say as a thank you for watching the presentation today. We would love to host your next town hall event. Do you have an upcoming town hall? Let us stream it live. We want to show you how this works, and we want to show you all the benefits of Blue Jeans events. Um, so all you need to do is on the right-hand side, you'll see this poll question that comes up. Just answer yes, and we will be in touch. We'll do the rest, and we'll help you out with pre, during, and uh, post remote event management. We'll show you how to use the product, and uh, that way, after you get a little bit comfortable with it, you can take the car keys and, and see for yourself how, how fantastic it is for these large-scale streaming events. So please click that yes on the right-hand side, and we will be in touch. And so with that, I'm going to exit out of this uh, screen share mode, and Mariah, you and I are going to go into a little bit of Q&A. Sounds great. Thanks, Justin. Um, so it looks like the first one we have is from Robert, and um, he's asked, uh, can the results of a poll be shared directly with attendees, or do I need to take the results and put them into an Excel spreadsheet and then share that? So great question. So if you're the event organizer and you're the one that planned the entire event, event you get a post-event report that includes answers to polls. And you, so if you're the event organizer, you would manually share that out with attendees. But the, the reason that it's set up that way is to keep some anonymity uh, for attendees so that not everyone knows exactly what was answered. But on those unique occasions where you'd like an organizer to be able to share out the percentages and the details, you can do that. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Robert also asked, has events reduced the attendee lag? It used to be 25 seconds from the time that the presenter would say hello and the attendee hearing it. What is the lag now? Obviously, something that is continually worked on, but I will say improvements are made every single day. Um, a lot of that hinges upon bandwidth and connectivity, and if you're in a vacuum-sealed internet environment that everyone can hear things uh, clearly without a lag. Uh, lag is currently there, but 25 seconds is on. I don't, I don't think commonly that it happens that badly. So uh, certainly something that we've taken seriously because we've heard about that, but um, I can say improvements since perhaps last you heard about it. Great. Thank you. Um, an anonymous asked, what is the difference between BlueJeans meetings and BlueJeans events? So think about Blue Jeans meetings on a smaller scale. You know, not only ad hoc meetings between one or two people, but smaller groups of people. And although meetings can host up to 125 endpoints and participants at once, it doesn't have the exact same back-end moderation and management features that Blue Jeans events has. The beauty of events is if you're in the moderator chair or the manager's chair, you want to be able to control what is being heard, you know, you want to be able to mute or unmute people's audio or video. You want to be able to push content live, push polls live and that kind of thing. So there is this extra sophisticated layer of management that comes with events that's built specifically for reaching a big, you know, audience at one time. Got it. Great. Uh, Margaret has asked, what's the difference between moderators and presenters? Great question. So we've got three different join links. There are three different roles that you can join uh, a Blue Jeans event as. You're either a moderator, a presenter, or an attendee. The moderator UI and the presenter UI are different. And the reason for that is, just like I've talked about, moderation and management. So a moderator needs to have this central dashboard where they can see chat, they can see polling, they can see QA, they can see mute versus unmute and all participants. The presenter just wants to focus on what was talked about. Like while I was giving the presentation today, I didn't necessarily want to think about technical aspects that were going on on the side. That's what Mariah is doing. So Mariah is a perfect example. She's fielding the questions right now, taking care of the chat. So she's in the moderator view using that end of it, while the presenter gets to speak and uh, focus on what they want to talk about. Great. And um, Anonymous asked, can product admins access real-time and historical event data? 
Yes, you absolutely can. That's the beauty of Command Center. You've got a management center that literally includes all of your historical data, all of your real-time data, endpoints, uh, geographic locations, where did people join from, how, how uh, was their event experience, did they rate the event positively or negatively. And if it was negatively, you get to be proactive and troubleshoot why it was that that endpoint didn't experience a great you know, start, middle, and end experience of the event. And so it allows you, as an IT person, to troubleshoot and uh, rectify any problems from happening again in the future. Great. Um, it looks like uh, we have a couple more here. Um, someone said, I would like a free BlueJeans event. Could you send the sign-up information? And I'm happy to answer that. Um, yes, absolutely. Uh, I'll be following up after this with um, with an email um, with the recording of today's webinar, as well as information um, for getting a free event. Um, Justin, did you have anything to add to that? No, we'll, but we will turn around quickly here and get in touch with anyone interested. So thank you for your request. Yeah, thanks so much for your interest. Um, looks like uh, Robert said, I don't see anything on the BlueJeans website about peer-to-peer -peer feature. Where can I get more information? Coming soon. And Robert, if, if it's the same Robert as earlier, I'm gonna, I will reach out specifically to Robert as well. Uh, and uh, thank you for that, and I can send you information about peer-to-peer -peer as well. Great. Uh, Carlos has asked, does BlueJeans meetings offer multiple moderators? There are, you can, you can join a BlueJeans meeting as a moderator, and you can mute upon entry, you can lock the event, and you can do other types of features, at least in that capacity, but you don't have the same level of, you know, advanced and robust technology that you do as a moderator in BlueJeans events. Uh, Randy has asked, uh, why is there no phone number for participants to dial in for BlueJeans events? We tend to focus on the cloud-based experience and the streaming web-based experience, although there are dial-in options. For this specific event, we have that unselected, but you can customize that when you set up your events. Okay, and uh, Randy also asked, and this is the last, the last question that I have, so um, if anyone else has any questions, um, Feel free to submit them now. But uh, Randy also asked if end users slash participants are wanting to join an event but do not have access to a computer with speakers, how are they able to listen? If say, Repeat the question, please. Uh, if end users slash participants are wanting to join an event but do not have access to a computer with speakers, how are they able to listen? That would probably be dial in. But if they don't have speakers to begin with, I'm going to have to solve that Rubik's Cube. What is, let me get back to you, I'll, I'll treat it like Jeopardy, but what, what is the gentleman's name? Randy. Randy, give me a moment. Let me think about that. I'll, I'll email you after this. Good question. Thank you. Um, we also have a question from Anonymous. Is it billed on an event-to-event -event basis, or is it a contract? Great question. Great question. And we have options depending on your needs, frequency of events, one-off versus non-concurrent licenses. And I'm happy to share that after this as well. Wonderful. Okay. Um, yeah, anybody else, feel free to submit any last-minute questions. Really appreciate everyone's participation in both Q&A and the poll. Really appreciate it. Okay, doesn't look like it. Um, thank you so much, everyone. I uh, really appreciate your time. Again, my name was Mariah, joined here by Justin. Um, again, we will be following up after this with the webinar recording and information on the free event. But um, have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye.